Hello everybody, it's Decentralized Dave. Welcome back to my rebranded channel. And this video will be the walkthrough the Radix DeFi white paper. And it's aimed for those who want to deepen their understanding of how Radix, Radix works. So uh, some of the truths are good to be repeated over and over. For instance, like the blockchain is replacing all system with true democracy. And DeFi bringing finance into internet age. So these two sentences, I think, ring very true and uh, they're very good to be you know reminded to ourselves over and over especially now when we're talking about true democracy uh, when we live in a world today where very very little from the democratic um, uh, um, uh, elections are actually democratic and i'm not just talking about the russian bloc the whole west is actually plagued with the uh, undemocratic elections so that's why we are desperately need uh, a new system that will allow us the true democracy that will actually come uh, that will allow us to come back to the democracy as it was like decades ago blockchain is actually offering that and that's one of the reasons why i'm here and why i do what i do so DeFi allows us to imagine better system than the one we have had for over 300 years ironically i think that the finance system like 50 years ago was actually better than the one that we have today. That's actually ironically. At least better for uh, like a majority of the population. Of course, it wasn't better for the elite. For the elite, uh, this is actually a very good system that we have at the moment because they're actually you know, taking slowly but surely all the power and all the rights from everybody else. So that's why also there is a desperate need for DeFi. Uh, today, DeFi is only 0.05% of total global finance. This is also just phenomenal when you think about it. Because uh, the global finance is, for, is, is valued at 400 trillion and the DeFi today is 0.05%. It just shows you the tremendous potential there is. We are just at the beginning of the journey. But the, the, yeah, people always say this, that we are just you know, early adopters. And people always say this in the greed in their eyes, thinking that you know, everything is going to thousand x or whatever. But what people don't realize that there are along the way obstacles because there is going to be like attack on the internet even in the future. There is going to be CBDCs that will be aggressively pushed to everybody and we are going to have to go through serious not only regulations of, of the decentralized projects but attacks, bans and stuff like that. Maybe hacks, who knows. So, you know, stuff like the attack on, on UST Terra, this is, I'm afraid this is just a mere sign of what is to come. So I'm just saying that, you know, the, the whole road is, is not going to be uh, short and easy. And, you know, people that just say that this is all going to go to, to the viral early adopters and stuff like that, they don't usually realize this, what's actually going to come until we get to the finish line. But yeah, I think that if the majority people will want this, and I'm pretty sure the majority people will want this system because this is so far the best system we can get this, at least this decade. The finish line is 400 trillion, and that's the point of this. Now, uh, Radix is removing the technical barriers, limiting the expansion of DeFi by building layer one uh, that, uh, that addresses the global scale it needs for 100 years. I've already talked about this instance. It's very, uh, it's very ambitious one. They have Scripto, their programming language, built uh, based on Rust. They have Blueprint Catalog, Blueprints, uh, that's how the smart contracts or components start. They have developer royalties, or actually will have, I don't think this is uh, today uh, online. And uh, they have unique consensus, consensus protocol called Cerberus. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, each of these in the following pages. There we go. So asset oriented smart contract paradigm. So a leader Ethereum fails to satisfy mass adoption. That's kind of obvious to everybody today. That's why ETH2 is being built and that's why there is so much hope in it. Uh, developers need high level of Ethereum understanding to deploy smart contracts and so forth. And uh, it's impossible to avoid exploits. This is just one of the few one of the many actually problems that Ethereum has and will continue having even once Ethereum 2.0 is on the market. Because uh, again, the uh, developers need a high level of Ethereum understanding to be able to deploy the smart contract or even do something so simple as like simple actions like uh, creating uh, the asset. Just to create an asset on Ethereum, you need a smart contract for that. 
So this is all wrong. Like it's it's wrong from the first principle. Like uh, so, new smart contract paradigm fi fixes this. It means that development is practical and safe. And that's what Radix is going for, because assets, for instance, are treated as global feature. So they're hardcore treated that it is hardcore in the platform, uh, that they are a global feature, that they aren't implemented in smart contracts. They are treated as physical objects. So double accounting is literally impossible in Radix. Uh, also, Radix Engine version 1 offers more intuitive and easy to use model comparing to Ethereum, much more. Radix smart contracts are called components. That's also very good uh, to, to notice because we are going to be using the component term a lot in this video. And components start as blueprints. So the developer who designs first has to you know design the code together, puts the code together that's going to work, and that's a blueprint. And then out of one or more blueprints, the components are made. Now, the language, Scripto. Scripto is asset-oriented smart contract language. It's based on Rust, uh, designed to treat assets as native as native citizens, once again. Creating and storing of an asset is only in a few lines of code, so everything in Scripto is meant to be, or it already is, way easier than the uh, Ethereum's solidity. There are blu blueprints in a component, uh, then uh, transactions in Radix Engine ver uh, version 2 are also asset oriented. When passing asset between components, they are passed in a bucket that consequently disappears. This is just one my, my note. This is just my note that I wrote here just because it really seemed like interesting. It's like there are lots of things in Radix that have been uh, that demonstrate the first principle approach. And then there is a concept of badges that uh, is used for uh, authorization and also have a physical behavior, the badges. Now, Lego bricks, yeah, this is a good concept to talk about. So Lego bricks, it's it's something that I have like uh, illustratively drawn here. So we all loved Lego when we were kids. And you can imagine the blueprints, you can imagine them as the block. And you essentially like the Lego, you just, you know, build something out of it out of the box, because each block is can be unique. Developers build like to see pre-existing and proven tools like libraries. Um, on network mechanism for script or blueprints can be leveraged, versioned, combined. And this is also my thought here, my personal note that blueprints uh, is like in Fura, in Fura, uh, but decentralized. So. Uh, what this means is that when you are a developer and when you design a blueprint out of the code uh, in, in Radix, you can version it. You can version it, you can uh, leverage it, you can combine it with others. And then, as we will talk uh, very uh, uh, in a moment about, there is going to be a, a developer to developer marketplace. And you can actually, the, the blueprints that you design, that you create, you can monetize them. You specify how much you monetize them for, you specify the rules, and based on how useful they will be, of course, therein is going to be the demand for them, right? So importing proven blueprints yield obvious benefits. Blueprints that do something uh, uh, useful can become de facto blueprints, the de facto standards to accelerate build and interoperability for all. So. This blueprint system and uh, especially the self-incentivizing developer system, it's actually going to cause way more building on the platform. And yeah, and all of this is going to be in like blue, uh, Radix blueprint catalog. Uh, Scripto code starts its life as blueprint in blueprint catalog, which I've just said. It's quick and easy for developers to access functionality created by others. So, and now self-incentivizing developer ecosystem. Developer royalty system, any component or blueprint may specify royalty for each usage pay in, and it's paid in the transaction based on the utility. So it's just like, wow, like this, some of the, this is why I'm doing this video. Some of the stuff in Radix is actually mind blowing. And yeah, it's still, Radix is still two years at least from being completed. So first time developer to developer marketplace for useful functionality. Radix will also build the centralized marketplace for blueprints called developer's guide. 
Now, there are a couple of myths in the space, and one of these myths is that high transactions per second is the most important thing for layer ones. That's not by far. It's one of the metrics, and it's being uh, often advertised by many layer ones, such as Avalanche and others, because they are really fast. They have tens of thousands of transactions per second. I don't think Avalanche does, but I think others like Phantom does and stuff. And of course, Radix also advertises this because it's a world recorder in this in this matter. But that tra uh, TPS alone failed to meet scalability requirements for DeFi. That's not the primary thing. What is more important than TPS is atomic composability, is scalability of transactions, and scalability of uh, DApps and smart contracts. So let's talk about each of these. I drew it into the three columns so it's easier for us. Uh, so atomic composability. Composability is equals interoperability. Um, typical shards makes apps run faster, that's true, but they do not have atomic access to each other. The shards themselves, the shards do not talk normally to each other in, in other layer ones. In designing servers, however, Unlimited comp uh, composability was a bedrock requirement. That's an important statement. Bedrock requirement. So the transaction, the, the shards in Radix will talk and talk uh, into each other on an atomic level. Scal scalability of transactions, communications between shards is usually difficult. One transaction in classical sharding isn't processed across multiple shards. Uh, Radix does unlimited number of shards. So uh, in the normal layer ones, sharded layer ones, because there are lots of sharded projects, um, uh, such as Zilliqa and others, layer ones, transaction isn't processed acro across multiple shards, but in Radix it is. Now, scalability of dApps and smart contracts. EVM is Ethereum's application layer. EVM is Ethereum virtual machine. So it's the application layer. So let's first clarify some of the uh, terms here. Uh, in Radix, the equal uh, of EVM, a lot of Radix application layer is parallelized. Each transaction defines which substate, also which shard, uh, must be included in its consensus. So uh, there is a state that carries in, in Radix, there are states that Radix done to talk a lot about it in the Radix Academy a while ago. Uh, and these states carry information which shards are relevant for this or that transaction. That's very important. Now let's have a let's talk a little bit about Cerberus, only very briefly, because Cerberus has a white paper of its own. Cerberus is a unique algorithm with with three core insights. Insight number uh, number one. Partial ordering, where servers can specify which shards are relevant for a specific transactions. Servers does it thanks to the states, states information. Second, braiding, where two or three phases of signed commitment between nodes and it finalizes transactions. So there is something like a braiding. And the third insight is the three braid consensus processes can run in parallel. So the free braid consensus, uh, we can, you know, I have drawn this uh, little picture here. One line is a shard. This is a shard. This is a shard. There are unlimited number of shards to unlimited number of rows here. And this is, we can call it E like emergent, like E like emergent, emergent one, emergent uh, one, emergent two. So as you can see, one emergent is, para is done in parallel across, across, uh, in multiple shards, these shards atomically talk to each other. And also, as you can see, there are lots of emergence that can be done also parallelized, you know, in one transaction. The, the column, the column one here is a transaction. Let's have a look at the last slide. So many things. So this is how the many things can be processed without slowing each other down. Uh, substates carry information about the rules from particular action. Thanks to the substate, application layer knows which charts are relevant for this or that transaction. And also Radix Engine treats tokens as global objects. We've already mentioned that. Each component and all its resources it owns is assigned to a single shard at any point in time. 
accounts are also components so there are uh, so each account gets its own shard automatically resources are uh, transacted in parallel without bottlenecks components run in parallel without conflicts so each dap can be parallelized by using multiple logically unrelated components and transactions uh, put together only the resources and components they need and they know that th thanks to the substates. So this was my walk through the Radix DeFi white paper. I hope it was interesting for you as much as it was interesting for me. Uh, you can learn a lot about not only Radix but also about the general blockchain space by going through these white papers. So uh, it was a pleasure to do this. Now, the next Monday, we will do the podcast as usually, one hour podcast with Curtis. And after the next Monday, there will be another review that I've already started preparing. So, and it's going to be one of the top 10 coins. So, uh, there is a lot to be looking forward to. And keep well, stay safe. Uh, I wish you strong hands in current market. I will talk to you soon. Have a nice day.